Oh, hey, good to see you guys there. What's going on, my little pumpkin sluts? Welcome back to the channel. I am your host, All American Truck Guy, and this is my beautiful little pumpkin slut right here. Anyway, this is my new and improved Yukon. As you can see, it looks a little different. It's nice and lifted. Gotta get a leg up or two to get a binner. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys that real quick. Now, before we move on to anything else, these are pit vipers. They make me look good, bro. Anyway, Cold of Corn Star is actually who made me discover these. And I really like them. They're strange. I, I know, I know. But they do get a lot of attention. People stare at me in public and they probably think I'm gross. But that's okay. It could also be the truck with the loud exhaust and the sunglasses. Combination of both. They probably think I'm a douche because my hat's always backwards. But anyway, moving on from that. I just want to apologize for not uploading any videos for a while. I've been trying to up, I've been trying to interact with you guys in the comments, and the primary reason is I have a lot going on in my life, and the primary thing that I had going on is done and over with now. Um, if you know my background and you know me personally, you know what you know what's been going on, and for you guys who are probably curious, I went into the army straight out of high school. I enlisted, took the oath, blah, 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 blah. I was 19 Delta and I got discharged prematurely. And no, I didn't do anything. I didn't get in a fight. I didn't throw anybody off a balcony or, you know, anything like that. Um, you know, I didn't do anything bad. I just got discharged in basic training. It was uncharacterized, which means it's nothing good or bad basically what they're saying about me and i had to get my my re code was a three which means you have to get a waiver and i've been through a variety of people who have tried to work with me and blah blah blah, blah. i got rejected and people shut my face in the door or shut the door in my face they didn't shut my face in the door okay they shut the door in my face anyway so yeah i found a guy his name was sergeant daniels and he's by far the best recruiter i've ever met in my life and i would change nothing and I, it was a pleasure to have worked with him. And, you know, my my waiver got approved and I was allowed to rejoin. And I turned it down to pursue another opportunity. Because had I enlisted and shipped out in on the date that I was offered, um, I wouldn't have been able to pursue this other thing that I'm trying to pursue. And a lot of people tell me it's not a good time to do it, given the state of the world. I'll just let you guys, you know figure out what that means um but it's it was always my backup plan i was going to do my three years in the army three and a half years in the army get out and do this um and if i had i had i done this i would have missed this opportunity and i wasn't willing to do that so sergeant daniels i'm sorry for the decision i made but i had to think about what was best for me and what made the most sense to me so with all that being said i'm going to stop bothering you guys or bombarding you with my problems in my personal life and we're going to go ahead and get into the video on this beautiful sexy lager the yukon i didn't mean to make a video but you know things happen on old trucks when you're trying to replace the simplest of things i'll give you a little hint of what i was trying to do and you may be able to see something's missing here or if you're not really familiar with vehicles you won't really notice there's two things missing actually pulley right there and the serpentine belt yes i was trying to replace the serpentine belt and the bolt was just spinning on the tensioner pulley which is this if you don't know it's like spring loaded twist it clockwise clock cl <laughs> i said clockwise clockwise and it relieves the tension on the serpentine belt well my bolt was just spinning and that could be a problem right there that ain't supposed to look like that bolt that's not normal so i took off the pulley that ain't normal neither <laughs> So anyway, I ordered a new tensioner pulley. Super simple. One bolt here, one bolt here, another bolt at the bottom. If you run into this, it's not a big deal. It's like a $35 part from Advance, and then you can get a $25 off coupon. So it turns into like $28 or something like that. So I ordered it. Three bolts, cracked them loose. They're not very tight. They don't need to be very tight. And then I cut off my belt because obviously I couldn't get the tensioner pulley off. But I have a new belt in the truck because I was in the process of replacing it. And I'm not from up here, but this shit pisses me off. All these pine needles and leaves. And then on top of that, if you guys are like nature enthusiasts or something, can you tell me what this is? I don't know if you can see that. All these little drops on my paint. It gets all over my windows. Oh, man, it pisses me off. You see all those little droplets? It's not water. It's coming from the trees or something. If, you could, if someone could tell me what this is, I'd greatly appreciate it. And how I can prevent it from getting on my vehicle. But yeah. 
super simple to replace the tensioner pulley. Just go ahead, pop these three bolts out, pop it back in, and then I'll show you guys how to route the belt when I get back with the tensioner pulley in and the new belt. Well, now that I'm done, I completely forgot to show you guys me actually installing it, but don't worry, it's not that hard. If you come over here, you have a vehicle. Chances are you do have a diagram right here that shows how your belt is run. This is for the diesels, this is for the V8s, and I assume this is for the V6s. Um, it's pretty self-explanatory. Nice Mustang, bro. Hell yeah, brother. Anyway, this is your harmonic balancer. This is your water pump. This is your power steering pump pulley. This is your alternator pulley. This is just your idler pulley, and this is your tensioner. So super easy. The way I did it is I routed all of it, got it on the tensioner, sprung it back with a breaker bar and then just slid it up underneath the idler pulley so it's pretty easy and now that we got that out of the way i'm going to go ahead and show you guys the lift yes a lot of you have been asking she is lifted now she is a little bit tooted so you north carolina truck boys like to say she tooted up dog she tooted Ooh, she linked anyway it's three in the rear six in the front after it was all said and done, it actually gave me like seven and a half in the front for some reason and two and a half in the rear. So it's funny how that works. But anyway, I'll show you some of the stuff I did while I was in here. New upper control arms, new inner tie rods, new outer tie rods. I just showed you that in reverse order. Those are the inners. Those are the outers. Uh, you're not going to be able to see it, but there's a there's new lower ball joints. Um... So as far as everything suspension wise, pretty much everything's replaced except for the lower control arm and the pitman arm and idler arm because it doesn't need them yet. Uh, these are the shocks that came with the used lift I got. I painted them gloss black. These are the CV axles. This one is actually torn. And I had a lot of issues. This lift kit, and we are gonna get into that in a minute. Um, as you can see, these are zip tied primarily due to the fact that I lost the bolts and they didn't really have that much slack in them and the ABS wires are toast and the knuckle or not the knuckle the control arm is super close to the tire that's because these are 17s stock Chevy 17s hopefully next week that will change so expect a video on that if there's no video obviously the deal didn't go through but hopefully I have a deal secured with a guy who seems really chill and if you're watching this i appreciate you dog but yeah moving on from that you can see the cross members right there there's the front there's the rear i had to replace both of those because both of them were bent and just so you can see that i'm not lying you guys remember from a previous video i powder coated in blue yeah i know i see blue here that's because that's the diff mount bracket that bolts into the back of it but there's no blue on the actual cross member you can see where the powder coat got knocked off in a couple places where there's rust underneath. Um, yeah. So both of those were bent and contorted. And I was able to use the spindles, but I had to buy all new diff mounts. The one for the passenger side right up there. Oh, I forgot to tuck that up back up in there. I'm glad I'm under here. And I had to buy both front and rear cross members. I had to buy all new hardware. Um, so a lift for this is around $1,400 after tax and stuff. And I wound up spending around $1,200 to get all the new stuff. Because Zach's a scumbag and he fucked me over hardcore on this lift kit. But we're, we're going to stop talking about that. Um, Let's see. The rear I bought 3-inch coil spacers and shocks. Um, And I did do this myself. Ugh. And just so you guys know, I'm not lying. I will show you my beautiful work. That way you can see that it's not professional and you can see that I got impatient. Yeah, that looks kind of ugly. That's where you cut the bracket off and then I ground this down by myself. Um, I'm going to be honest, it took me a while because I had to wait on new cross members and then, uh, long story short, I put it back together and both of the front wheel bearings blew out. I wish I could show you guys that, but I was just so, so irritated that point i just wanted to get it back together and i didn't record anything so yeah i'm sorry i didn't have any content to show you guys as far as installing the lift goes Ugh, but i can assure you i did do it myself 
with the exception of one of my friends who's in the army and stationed at Fort Bragg, he came over and pretty much hung out with me and, you know, he didn't really help. He just kind of supervised and was moral support so I didn't fucking hang myself by the balls. But yeah, this is it. Uh, I did have 35s on it and I'll show you a picture of that, but I was never, I haven't ever been so dissatisfied with a set of wheels and tires in my life. I sold them after three days of being on my vehicle. If that, it was probably like two. And yeah. So this is the lift kit, six in the front, three in the rear, rough country, non-torsion drop. She looks pretty good. I almost forgot to show you guys while I was in the process of this. I did install rock lights. They're expensive. I got them for free, believe it or not. I got them from my cousin. Um, so yeah, I'll show you those when it gets a little darker. They're actually good ones, kind of. They're kind of stupid. They, they have a little flaw for some reason. I can't really figure it out, and I'm not really worried about it because I run white anyway. But when I put it on blue, the rear will be, like, green. Or, like, that that side, the front passenger will be blue, and then this one will be blue. And then front driver and rear passenger will be green or some shit like that. But I usually run white, and it's kind of cool to put it on orange. Well, if you guys enjoyed that video, you can let me know by leaving a like, leaving a comment, and subscribing to me. You know? Helps a fella out, let, motivates me to make more videos for you guys. Um, so yeah, that's going to be the end of the video. And I really hope you guys enjoyed it. And I hope you like the way my Yukon looks. Um, hopefully we got wheels and tires coming soon. Um, if it happens, you'll be getting a video. If it doesn't, you probably won't be getting a video on it. But I'm going to try and do more videos. I might start trying to do vlogs. If you want to see those, let me know. If you guys want more videos, let me know. And I'll catch you guys in the next one.